All right. Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael, and today I want to talk to you about how we can use light signals to perturb collectively swarming midges. And that's work I've been doing together with Kaspar van der Vaart over there and Nicolette at Stanford. And all of this was funded by the AIO. So, as you all know, uh, and seen several times over the past few days that if we look in uh, nature, we often see many species of animals uh, forming groups or aggregates that often exhibit uh, fascinating spatial and temporally complex uh, patterns and dynamics. And often this behavior is collective in the sense that uh, the statistics of the group as a whole are distinguishedly different from the aggregate statistics of individuals. And now to make our life as physicists more uh, complicated and exciting, often or typically these groups of animals in nature are subject to a countless number of environmental perturbations, be it be light, let be light cues, wind sweeping through these bird flocks, uh, water currents driving uh, these fish, predators coming in, the environment itself might be changing, and so on and so on and so on. So to... Um, investigate the interplay between this collective behavior and environmental perturbation. One could go to the field, set up an experiment, and as all of you uh, that do field work know, that even that is a pretty challenging task. But now to add on that, to uh, also try to uh, um, estimate or even control the environmental, uh, environmental conditions is even a much, much harder task. So uh, we are not going to do that. And we make our life uh, much simpler than that. So we go in our laboratory and we set up an experiment there. And the system we are looking at is, is a Chironomus riparius mating swarm. So Chironomus riparius is a, a non-biting midge species, which uh, non-biting parts are especially useful for experiments. And most of this time, these, uh, this Chironomus riparius spends in larvae or pupate state, and only for the final three or so days of their life, they shed their digestive system uh, and mature, and the only thing they basically care about from that point on is mating. And the way they do that is during dusk and dawn in nature, they typically form mating swarms uh, over visual cues, let it be a branch or a side of a river, and males will come in, collectively swarm over that visual cue, and wait for females to come in to mate. In our lab, we have a black uh, marker in the center of our, this plexiglass tank uh, to trigger the swarming, and we set the swarm on an artificial day and night cycle, which we can easily do with an uh, overhead lamp. And during our nighttime, the males of the colony come from the walls, start swarming, and wait for females to come in. So we can easily set up an experiment here, and what we do is we set up three cameras, um, we um, hardware synchronize them, so we actually can use uh, Lagrangian particle tracking, which allows us to reconstruct three-dimensional positions, accelerations, uh, and velocities for all individual midges in the swarm. We can record that with 100 hertz, and then get actual um, trajectories of the individual midges. So, and this is how the typical situation in our lab looks. So this is a time series of, uh, of the number of swarming midges in our lab in this experiment as a function of time. This is over the course of a few days. And uh, white, uh, orange ba background means it's their daytime. Blue background, it's their nighttime, which we conveniently set at, to start at 10 o'clock in the morning, so we don't need to get up early. And, um, you see that right after the night kicks in, the number of midges uh, swarming over the markers quickly increases, then uh, gradually decreases a bit over the night, and as soon as the uh, daytime kicks in, they see to swarm and wait for the next night to come. And a typical swarm would look like this. So you see at the bottom the marker over which they swarm. And on top, this is a post-processed uh, video uh, from uh, our data. You see the, the males uh, fly around uh, in an, a very dynamic and interesting way all across uh, the marker. Well, and as I said in the beginning, we wanted to find out whether light does influence any of their behavior. And the zeroth order thing to do there is that, of course, um, if you think of nature, not every night has the same darkness or brightness. The, the moon might be up, clouds might uh, be in the sky, so not every night is the same. So the zeroth order question we uh, could tackle is, uh, does ambient light actually influence their behavior in any way? And in the lab, we have the convenience to be easily able to do that, so we set up an additional uh, broadband white light LED, which we can tune up, and then we can th run the experiment at different uh, lighting conditions. And what we see here, 
is that this actually has no effect at all. So what I'm showing, showing you here is for two different experiments. One is at, at the standard typical nighttime, uh, and one experiment where we cranked up the brightness in the room uh, quite a bit. And on top, I'm showing you the PDF of the velocities of individual images. On the bottom, the PDFs of acceleration. And I'm not quite sure whether you can actually see the colors nicely in the back. So there's uh, one PDF in blue uh, corresponding to uh, the darker case, and one PDF in orange corresponding to the brighter case. And these PDFs virtually coincide. So changes in ambient light don't seem to have any effect on the images at all. But of course, uh, we are in the lab, so we can do whatever we want. And so we, uh, what we now can do, we can hook up our light to a function generator and uh, turn on and off with a square wave versus head frequency. And this is what I'm showing you here. So uh, white background here means this light is turned on, while if the background is black, it's turned off. So this is roughly on the three second switching period. And now you can see something really interesting. Every time the light turns on, these images tend to get more exciting and also come, uh, come together more closely. And every time the light turns off, they seem to diffuse away. Now, and of course, we can quantify that. So what I'm showing you here is a time series of the mean velocity of images in the swarm in blue, and under that, the light signal we are giving it to them, the square wave. On top, it's a very fast uh, light switching while it goes down to about uh, switching every five seconds at the bottom. And if you look closely at these time series, especially if you look at the bottom, you can see that uh, with increasing period of uh, us switching the light, also the mean signal of this velocity seem to follow one to one. And especially if you look, start looking here, you can see that these peaks in the, uh, the brightness also seem to coincide with the peaks in the mean velocity. Now, to quantify that a bit more, we can look at the um, Fourier transformation of this uh, signal, uh, and you see on the left, this is the uh, amplitude uh, spectrum there that um, the velocity signal itself has, a, has a, a pretty distinct peak, and if we pick that out, we see that this peak of the velocity coincides with the uh, frequency of the driving we are putting onto the swarm. So at the same rate as we uh, switch the light on and off, the images also tend to become faster and slower. And to give you a picture that's corresponding to the first uh, plot I've shown you, here are again the PDFs of, uh, on top of the velocities of individual images and at the bottom of acceleration of individual images. And now you see, actually see a difference. So every time, the, so I am split this up by uh, periods where this uh, periodic light is turned on and turned off. Every time it's turned on, it's the orange curve. Every time it's turned off, we are back at the blue curve. And now you see that what you've probably also guessed from the video, that when we turn on the light, images tend to become faster and accelerations become higher, and every time we turn uh, the light off again, uh, both, move, both PDFs move to the left. This alone is already pretty interesting, but it's not yet any sign of collectivity, just because all images uh, happen to react to the same uh, signal at the same, in the same way doesn't mean there's any collectivity to that response. Um, but of course, we can look at more global uh, features of the swarm. So what I'm showing you here for the same experiment is a PDF of distances of midges to the center of mass. So basically, we, at each instant in time, we uh, compute each uh, the center of mass and uh, the distance of each individual midge to that center of mass and plug that into that PDF. And then you see what was also visible in the video, that uh, when we turn on the light, the swarm tends to be slightly compressed. So this PDF, the orange PDF, tends to slightly move to the left, meaning the swarm is denser than uh, it was uh, in the case where the light was off. And it's not only that the swarm becomes smaller, it's also uh, more tightly bound to its core. So this is a slightly uh, difficult plot, so let me walk through here. So what I'm uh, computing now is uh, the acceleration of each individual midge towards the center of mass. So, um, oh. 
So basically, if I have a MIG which has a certain acceleration at any point, the projection on that onto its uh, uh, vector towards the center of mass, it is, it's, it is, that's the condition, it's the acceleration of that MIG towards the center of mass, that component. And now, if I, what I'm showing you here is the conditional average of uh, these uh, uh, projected accelerations of all midget conditioned on the distance of the midge from the center of mass. And what you see here is again that in the light on case, these, uh, this conditional acceleration towards the center of mass is stronger, meaning the midges are bound more tightly. And in contrast to uh, the individual's PDF velocity and uh, acceleration PDFs I've showed you a few uh, minutes or half a minute ago, this is actually a, a indicative of a collective response of the whole swarm. So not only all uh, become all midges become more excited and fly around faster, they also become uh, denser, closer together, and are bound more tightly together when the light switches on. Now, as we are in the lab and uh, we can basically uh, go to a little bit more extreme cases, so we cannot only play them a little bit of light on off, we can really crank up the, the, the light by a lot. So we did another set of experiments where we were less careful about not uh, scaring them too much, and we uh, created a big, uh, really significant difference between the bright and the dark case. And this is uh, here for a little bit of a bigger swarm, and the same visualization as before, when the background li light is turned off, the background here becomes uh, dark. When the background light is turned on, the background becomes light again. And now you see, uh, on top of the features you've seen before, namely that the midges tend to get more excited when uh, the light is turned on, and they seem to become closer to each other. You also, every time if you pay attention, we switch the light, there seems to be some coherent uh, direct movement of all midges between uh, so go, they, when the light turns off, they seem to all quickly go here and then relax, and the light turns off, they come all up there and relax again. And this, let's call it scared response, is interestingly seems to be independent of the driving frequency. So here, um, what I'm showing you here is uh, our phase average accelerations. So we run this experiment for a long, long time. Um, at constant uh, frequency, then we wrap everything up to produce a phase average of the acceleration, and then we repeat the whole experiment for, for various uh, different frequencies. And what you see here is uh, the same effect as seen before. The images seem to be more, ex uh, more excited, high, have higher accelerations when the, in the phase where the light is turned on, and be, uh, have a slower acceleration when the light is turned off. But additionally, you see these, uh, this big peak every time we switch the light when there's a strong light gradient in the square function. And this peak seems, uh, no matter how fast we drive, it seems always to be about 0.3 seconds. Mm, we actually don't know why they are doing that, so if I, in the end somebody has a suggestion what's actually happening here, I will be happy to hear that. But uh, that got us pretty excited about this. And um, to once again wrap back to the beginning, um, what's happening now, you see again here's this, uh, phase average acceleration I've just shown you before. And on top of that, we did a control experiment. Uh, we, uh, at the same day, uh, with the same lighting, uh, same, same swarm, we ran uh, one run of the experiment where we had the sprite LED on all the time and the sprite LED on off all the time. This is blue and uh, orange, respectively. And now something really interesting can be seen here. So apparently, what happens is every time our extra LED, bright light LED is turned on, the swarm behaves as if it would be in this static ambient light case, while every time the light goes off, the swarm tends, appears to be, uh, get into a state that's typically not reached by this ambient light, uh, constant ambient light experiments. And again, we don't know why we, uh, the swarm goes into the state, but we can put this into a thermodynamic framework. So we've shown earlier that um, several of the features of these swarms can be described in a classical thermodynamic sense. And especially one can define a pressure like this. So this defi microscopic definition of pressure is essentially a virtual pressure that the swarm would exert on an invisible sphere centered around uh, the center of mass if the, this sphere would be responsible for changes in acceleration. And uh, so the 
the dots here, the orange, uh, as always, the orange dots are correspondent to a bright case. Blue dots are correspondent to the dark case. Uh, conditional averages of this pressure on the density of the swarm. And these uh, big, uh, two big dots are the global average over these two phases. And it appears to be that all of these uh, points, no matter whether it's light, and, uh, light on or light off, fall on something that looks pretty much like uh, uh, isotherm and classical thermodynamic. And it seems that with these periodic switching of light, we seem to be able to move the swarm along the single isotherm, um, but not be able to like, create a completely new state. It seems to be the same behavior, just moved along in the phase diagram. And with that, let me come to an end. So, We've seen that midges uh, react to uh, per per perturbations, so to light gradients. Um, we see a dynamic response to these gradients. Uh, we all, we all see an individual response of midges as well as a collective response of the whole swarm. And we seem to see that we are able to move the swarm along an isotherm in a thermodynamic phase diagram. With that, I'm happy to have questions and would be really happy to hear suggestions what actually the mechanism of these responses would be if anybody has an idea. Thank you.